What brought you here to the Provo area with Utah? So I grew up in southern Utah, a little town called Beaver. And so, so Utah is home for me. Um, I actually lived out of state for a few years and uh, had the opportunity to come back and work here at the university. Um, e even though it, this isn't small town Utah, uh, Pro Provo is still close enough to family that I, I consider a home now. So, When you think about the reasons you stayed here, was it predominantly work, or was it family, or was it community, or I guess? Mo mostly family. Um, I, I had a job in Texas that I enjoyed. Um, I, we, we had some little kids, and we just wanted to have them closer to their grandparents, have grandparents closer to the grandchildren. Um, I, I miss the mountains, I miss my family. Oh. And so uh, when I had the chance to come back to Utah, I was, it, it, it was work-related, obviously, but, but it was more family-driven than work-driven. My personal family tree goes back uh, multi-generations here, and I, I just feel an affinity for this area for some reason. Like, like when I lived in Texas, um, we had trees and no mountains, and, and that was okay, but, but I sort of missed the sagebrush. Um, I, missed, I missed the sparseness. <laughs> does, does, that ever, does that ever feel like a, a gut feeling? Intentionality when you make those shifts in location in life? Um, that's a hard one to answer. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm supposed to ask hard questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there, there's definitely some sort of a gut feeling with it. There, there's a kinship. I come from a pretty big family, uh, oldest of eight kids. And uh, so, so there's a, a natural tie to want to be close to them and see them. I know technology has made that so that you can still see them, but it's not quite the same as when you're around them. It's very different. Um, now, now, having said that, this, this may sound ironic, sometimes you can live too close to family too. So it's sort of <laughs> nice to have you know, a little bit of boundary between there so you don't have to see them every day of the week, but uh, enough that you can see them when you, when you want to. So. Healthy boundary. Amen. <laughs> about your life uh, leading up to this point is there one thing that sticks out as feeling positive that you can feel proud of look back on and say you know what? I'm really happy about that um I yeah I I think the the thing I'm most proud about I, this this goes back to my last family it goes back to my roots it, it is my family um, I'm, I've got five kids and uh, I, I feel like outside of well even inside of work everything I do is built around them Yes. And uh, I'm heading home now to start driving around to their practices, <laughs> go, go to all their football games, their dance recitals, their their orchestra concerts, just w whatever. Yes. I, every, everything I do is, is built around that, and uh, I I really enjoy it. I, I don't think I would trade that for for not probably not anything really. So family makes life worth living. Before, you know, yeah. When you have good family. Um, on the flip side of that, was there any time in life? that did not go according to plan. How do you look at those times that were uncertain or challenging? Uh, do you look at them like, I wish I could have done that differently? Or? Um, that's a fair question too. I, I don't know as I would change a lot of what I've done. Um, I, me, meaning that I, I've enjoyed the ride. There's, there's definitely been some ups and downs along the way. Uh, there's, there's been moments, for, for instance, it took me seven years to finish my PhD because I was trying to work part-time. I was trying to work full-time, not part-time yeah. during that, and trying to go to school part-time, and that just doesn't work in a PhD program. And there were days I'd bang my head against the wall going, I, why am I doing this? And uh, I, I think the one thing I've, I've really learned is that probably stop thinking so much about destinations and think more about the journey. It, you know, that seven years of school was all about when's the end, when's the end, when's the end. When, when in reality, it was a pretty good ride. Those seven years, I, I learned a lot, it was enjoyable. Life, life still went on, you know. I, I wasn't necessarily in my career at that point in time. But, but in hindsight, I don't think it really mattered. I, my, my background's actually civil engineering, so um, I, I, I work on roads and bridges and tunnels and, and buildings and things like that. And there was a point in my life where, I, I, you know, I would look at the road and think, that's awesome, and I still do, roads are awesome. Most people look at it and go, it's just generic concrete, right? Sure. But it's really cool. Yeah. But, but there was a, a switch. And, and again, I don't think it was like a, a defining moment. But, but there was a switch when I realized that what I'm doing has more to do with the end user and less to do with the product. And uh, I, I, 
I've strived really hard the last handful of years to preach that to the students that I work with, that, that life's more about the journey, life's more about the people that we're serving, um, concentrating and focusing more on those people and less about the, the product, the paycheck, the, the vacation or what, whatever else. Those, those things matter, but, but just not as much. To kind of go philosophically and tie engineering into life. Yeah. When you're in engineering and you have to put safeguards in place or prove a certain equation to make sure that you know, the tolerances are in a certain way, do you think life operates on a similar plane? Do you think there's like a, a level of uh, focus that people should put into life decisions or should they just go and you get the product out of ASAP without? You know? That's fair too. I, I teach a managing a risk class. And uh, one of the very first exercises I have the students do is focus parallels on risk management they do in their life with what, what that would mean in the construction industry. Wow. And the, the irony is, I don't know if irony is not the right word, but it, the parallels don't change all that much. Mo most of the types of life risk that we do as far as managing are more informal, a little more subconscious. But the principles are exactly the same. We, we identify risks, we prioritize those risks, we, 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 we manage them as best as possible and we deal with them. Um, the, the other thing that I work with in my classes with my students, uh, when we're constructing buildings, I like to compare that to constructing your own life. And, and again, the parallels are, are pretty deep. Um, the, the idea that you, you got to have some planning, you got to have some designing. There, there's obviously building. Once something is built, it's, it's never like end product. You've always got to maintain, you got to operate. Um, sometimes things go wrong in a building. Sometimes things go wrong in our life. So, so what do we do? We, we, we got to rebuild. The parallels are there in, in a lot of different ways. So I, I don't really decouple engineering from life. I, I see it as being highly coupled that the principles uh, may, maybe not so equation-based with life, but, but definitely process-based on a very social level. So, Think about engineering again, uh, and when things go in motion, how things like turbulence and chaos start to get introduced, do you think that we you better take motion in life and take less, introduce an unnecessary amount of chaos and turbulence into the system? I think, and, I, and, this, and this, I, this is more of a belief than a thought process here, I, I think that there's a certain amount of chaos that in, is introduced in our lives that just happens because of the way the world is. But there's definitely, I don't know if it's equal, but there's definitely a large amount of chaos that occurs in our lives just, just because of the decisions we make. I, I want to minimize the chaos that I introduce into my life and optimize the opportunities that are there because the natural world around us is going to introduce an equal amount of chaos that we just can't, can't we can't control that part of it if you could cut your age in half and give a piece of advice to that younger self what would one piece of advice be um probably probably again don't stress so much about the the next step life sort of seems to take care of itself that that, that doesn't mean it's easy by any means there's ups and there's downs but uh, just, just stop stressing so much about life and, and just, just live it, make your decisions, um, fight through those hard times, enjoy the good times, and uh, just, just enjoy the ride.